Ratbone here, back with another episode of the Weekly Purple Team. And this week, we're going to cover lateral movement in depth. And the reason I'm covering lateral movement in depth is I did some research for SANS as part of my master's program. It just got included in the Research Review Journal, Volume 5. You can check that out. It's much more in depth than what I'm going to show today. But what I realized in doing this research is we are terrible, and I mean terrible, at detecting lateral movement. This is an area where the adversary is super constrained. They only have about eight, nine different techniques they can use to move laterally, but yet we're terrible at detection here. If we could get better at this, we could catch the adversary more readily. So what does that mean? Time for an episode of Weekly Purple Team. We're gonna rapid fire out about eight different techniques for lateral movement. So we're gonna do RDP, we'll do admin shares, we'll do service install with PS exec, We'll do scheduled task, WMI, WMIC, DCOM, and PS remoting. So this is quite a bit. It'll be a little bit longer than our, my usual Purple Team videos, but I have a feeling this one will make an impact and maybe can be used as a reference for you guys. So let's start with RDP. So we're going to come over here to our Cali box, and we're going to pull open Remna. Remna, a very common tool used for RDP. It's been used by adversaries many times as well. If you read any threat intelligence reports, they will use it to RDP around from Linux hosts into Windows. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go ahead and we'll start an RDP session. We can see right here, we are on Win2022FS 22, 22 or the file server, and we are administrator. And we just took over a session that was already established. So that would be the attack. They stole credentials. They were able to RDP. The detection here is the interesting part. So common wisdom for detecting RDP is you look for event code 4624 and win log event data log on type 10. So this is gonna be the interesting part, watch. I have no data. Why do I have no data? Because it only records this event at the initial establishment. So if it only records the event at the initial establishment of the session, you, there may be a bunch of RDP events that you don't see because maybe the session is already established. So how do you remedy this? You look for the Microsoft Windows Terminal Services Remote Connection Manager channel, and then you look for event code 1149. Now, this is not in most sims. You will need to parse this and bring it in. But if we look for 1149, we can see immediately that our session was recorded. Here is the server, 122FS. If we look at the log here, you can see it was administrator, just like we said. It was the domain of hacklab.com and the IP address of 192.168.138.30, which is my Cali box. So I may not get the host name of the system with this log. You can use different forensic artifacts to get that. But just realize that RDP on its own 4624 type 10 is not the end-all be-all. You may miss things if you're not recording other artifacts here, okay? All right, next one. So that was the blue for RDP. Let's go back and let's do red for admin shares. Admin shares, first off, what are admin shares? They are the C dollar, IPC dollar, and admin dollar shares. These are used for accessing the registry, accessing things via SMB. And if you have full admin to these, you basically have full control of the system. So how do we know if we have full admin to these? Well, we can just simply scan the host with SMB map. So we're going to use SMB map. We're going to use our user Clint Barton, his password, the domain, and the IP target. So we run SMB map here and it tells us, hey, we have read write on these two and read only on this one, right? But notice it says admin. So I know I'm an admin on this box. So what can I do then? All sorts of badness. But the easiest thing I can do is just mount a share and move files around. So I can do SMB client, just like this. And then I have the admin dollar directory there, which is Windows 32. And there you go, you can see Windows System 32 right there. So now I can kill this off and we can go do the blue team side of this. So the blue team side of this one, you need detailed file share logging, or at minimum, file share logging, but I prefer detailed because detailed is going to give us more information. So we would look for event code 5145, 
and the name of the share. In this case, we're going to look for admin because we know we just did the admin dollar share. And right there, you can see admin, right? And you can see earlier some badness. <laughs> well, we'll look at that in a minute. But right there, the admin dollar share can be used for accessing all sorts of things. We have basically complete control of the host if we see admin dollar share. So if you see desktops communicating from one another on the admin share, that's not great. Maybe you should look at that. All right. Technique number three, expanding upon our admin share access. We're going to use SMB client here. So if I come back over here to Kali and I know I have access to the admin share, I can use SMB exec from Impacket and I can get a shell. So this will install a service with a random name and it will also have an artifact of comspec in it. But this defender is on on this system and notice I have a shell and I'm system. And that was when 10 host two here. And as you can see, defender fully on except the firewall. Now I have the firewall turned off for some of the later part of the demos, but virus and threat protection, all of it's there. Everything is on. And we will do some others with Cortex XDR involved later as well. But that is how you would detect, or that is how lateral movement can happen when you have shares open with SMB. This still works, works to date on a lot of systems, right? Okay, so we'll kill off our session there. Let's go do the detection of this one. There's two methods of detection here. Here you want to look for the 5145 and the admin dollar share if we refresh that. You're going to see some more admin share access here. But if you look here, you can see some of some badness, like I mentioned earlier. We can also look at the IPC dollar here. So we do IPC. We can see, look, we're accessing service CTL, that service control. And that's the installation of the service. You can take a look at this. You can see service CTL was accessed. And then you need another artifact you're looking for either event code 4697 or 7045 with the image path containing comspec. You should be looking for this. If you see comspec, that's really bad, right? A lot of Packer tools will use comspec. So look for percent comspec percent in a service installation, and you know you've got something nasty. In this case right here, you can see this blob. Run if you see something like this. But notice Defender didn't do anything here. I was able to get a shell remotely. All right, well, let's keep going. Now we're going to do PS exec. So Windows can be used by bad guys too. So we're going to use Windows here. Let's use PS exec. So this time we're going to PS exec over to a host with Cortex XDR on it as the EDR. And it's not going to detect it either because, well, this is a signed legitimate Microsoft executable. Can bad guys use this? Of course they can. So we'll do PS exec. It's going to start a service and it's going to give us a shell here in just a second. This one takes a minute. It's just slow because, well, it's PS exec. So this one can take a little more time than some of the other parts of the demo. Hopefully it works. I've had some trouble with this one. And there we go. I'm going to do who am I? And I am Clint Barton, the user that I created the session for, right? So I have lateral movement via PS exec. You should be alerting on this. Your admins should not be using this. This one, very easy detection, very simple. You're just looking for the service name of PS exec in a 4697 or 7045 event. So just like this, there is our PS exec service installation right there. We can see 4697 right there. So that is the detection for PS exec. All right. Now, let's go do scheduled tasks. Scheduled tasks, we're going to use a tool that a newer tool that I found called go exec. Uh, go exec, uh, kind of meant to be a replacement for the impact of tools, but written in go. This one's pretty cool. We're going to quickly create a task. That task is going to launch calc, right? I could launch anything I want, but it's going to create a task that launches calc and then immediately delete itself. So that's what it does. Go ahead and paste this in. Notice we have go exec, tsch create. 
our user Clint Martin, password, DCIP, what channel we want in the task scheduler, and then the task that we want. So there we go. And it registered a task to the system. This could be anything. It can run any executable I tell it to, right? It could be used for persistence or lateral movement. In this case, we're using it for lateral movement. You should be looking for new scheduled tasks in your environment. So if we go over here to our Elastic Sim, this one we're looking for event code 4698, just like that. And you can put it in quotes or not, but as you see here, we now have our scheduled task. And if you look closely here, you can see it is calc.exe right there. But I'll take it to a little bit easier view here. Let's see if it parsed it out. Maybe it didn't parse it out. Well, regardless, it's obviously the task I just created, right? Once again, no defender. This is admins. How often are admins reaching across the network to establish tasks? Almost never, right? They're going to go to the system. You should be alerting on new scheduled task creation, especially outside of business hours from non admin accounts that you know don't create these things. This is a definite, very, very common way that the adversary will move laterally. All right, the next couple, you typically, if you have the Windows firewall, you are safe from these. But I still have customers that don't have the Windows firewall turned on. So we're going to do WMI and DCOM. Now these, if you have the Windows firewall, you're probably safe, but we will still show you what these look like. So in rapid fire fashion here, we're going to do Go exec again. This time we're going to do WMI and we're going to call cmd.exe. So we're going to use WMI process call create and we're going to do cmd.exe. Just simply call cmd.exe. Okay. So there we go. We have called cmd.exe process ID 8216. So if I come back over here to Windows Host 2 and I go into Process monitor, notice I have 8216 running cmd.eac right there. So I could call any process to launch. Nasty, right? WMI, definitely not used. You should absolutely be alerting to this. This is an easy, quick alert. You look for, now this one requires process execution or sysmon. You can look for anything with a parent process of WMI priv se. So if we do this, we can see WMIPRIVSE right there. And if we expand this out, we can see it launched the process command line of cmd.exe. WMIPRIVSE, not widely used except for monitoring systems, and you can create exclusions for those. I would absolutely be looking for anything creating uh, a process as WMIPRIVSE because it could be a bad guy. All right, next one, DCOM. This is one that a lot of people don't know about. This is a newer lateral movement technique. A lot of organizations don't have detection for this one. So on this one, we're gonna do go exec DCOM. We're gonna run a command and we're gonna pull back the information from the command. So we're gonna run DCOM MMC, Clint Barton Hack Lab attack. We're going to run cmd.exe. We're going to give it C who am I priv, and then we're going to pull back privs.txt. So we'll go ahead and run this. And notice it completes. If I do cat privs.txt now, I have my privileges. So how do I detect this one? Well, notice the DCOM path that I used was MMC. Well, MMC is the uh, it's a Microsoft Snap-in Manager, right? It's the management console for Windows. Should your MMC.exe ever be launching anything? Probably not, right? So in this case, we can look for event code 468801 and a parent process name of MMC.exe. And here we go. We'll just look for MMC.exe right there. This is, as you can see, there's our CCMD who am I priv right there. And you can see it's running from temp. So it dumps it into temp. You can look for this, right? MMC.exe should not be launching sub processes, period, right? Easy alert, easy win. 
And finally, PS Remoting. This one is challenging in general. On this one, we're going to use Win 10 Host 6, and we're going to do PS Remoting into Win 10 Host 2. So we've got Johnny Storm over here, and he's, we'll put him into PowerShell real quick, just like that. And now we're in PowerShell. We're going to do enter PS session. So enter PS session means that I'm going to get a remote session on this host. There's two methods to do, to do this. There's enter PS session and there's invoke command. I find that EDR is really good about detecting invoke command. Not so good about enter PS session. I can do enter PS session and then I can run any command I want. So why would I just do invoke command unless I need to? So here we go. We'll do enter PS session. It will prompt me for credentials. And also, it, you should be looking for this amongst your desktop environment. Almost never is a desktop going to PowerShell into another desktop. And here we go. Now we have, who am I? And there a, we are, HackLab Clint Barton. I can run anything I have credentials for here. So I've used WS Marion and PowerShell Remoting to move into the system. I can run scripts this way. I can do all sorts of things this way. So detection for this one is interesting. Now, what you look for here is you're going to look for event code 4688 or 1, and you're going to look for wsmprofhost.exe running basically anything. So we can see right here, we're looking for wsmprofhost.exe. And if we scroll down, you can see this tells us that we have most likely a session created. Whenever you see embedding, we have a session created. Now this one, you might have to create multiple alerts to correlate what happened. So this is the first step. We think we had a session created because we saw WS Improv host execute. You might want to look at any sub commands that are run at that time. Now, if we do, if we want to know for sure that we had a session, we can look at other event IDs 400 and 403. And then we look for the PowerShell engine being established, and that is server remote host as the title. This is another way to guarantee that you're detecting the sessions. So let's do that. And here we see available and server remote host on 400. And right there, we can see here's our PowerShell state. We can see this is host 2 win 10. So we know that a session was established to host 2 win 10 don't know exactly where from, but we know it happened, right? There are other artifacts that will give you where it came from. Now, if we do event code 4688 or one and the parent process, the process parent executable wsmprofhost.exe, this will show us any commands that were run or anything that it launched. So at this point, we'll do that. And you can see right here, it was the parent process of this event right here. And what did it launch? Who am I? So there you go. Any sub processes run via WS Improv host that gives you PowerShell remoting detection. As you can see, this is a little bit more challenging than a lot of people make it out to be. But some simple segmentation can make this easier for you. Make sure your admins are coming from a jump box. Make sure they're only coming from a certain segment of your network. That way you know what normal is. You know what normal is, you can detect abnormal. Now this was very rapid fire, and I will make sure that I segment out the video for each of the detection and responses, but this is most of the techniques, or at least an example of most of the techniques of lateral movement. If you can detect all of these, you're gonna detect bad guys. All right, once again, thank you very much for watching and hack the planet to defend back.